Hey there, apprentice. To kick off our programming course, we're going to create a script to give a weapon to our character. You can choose any weapon from the game, all right? So, come along. For all the programming part of the course, we're going to use an IDE. It's basically a text editor with some extra features to help out when we're programming. Don't worry, it comes installed with 5M itself. Just search for FXDK in the search bar. If you run into any issues while opening the program, just get in touch on Discord. We're going to create a new project. Name it Course and select a folder on our computer to save this project. It's really important not to select the desktop due to a bug with OneDrive on Windows 10. So I've made a folder called Course, and I'll save my project there. I'll click Select, and then Create. If it's your first time using FXDK, you'll see a tutorial pop-up. Just click on it. And if you've used another IDE before, you'll get this message to import the extensions for this IDE. Click close or ignore to never see it again. And now we can start our first script. I'll click new resource. Give my script a name, in this case, weapon, all right? And I'll select the JavaScript template here. That's the language we'll be using in this course. When I click on that, it'll give me some default files. I'll click create. And now we're going to start programming our script inside the client JS file. Just like in a soccer game, our player in the game is identified by a number. With this number, I can perform specific actions with each player. If my player has a number, say 258, every time I want them to do something like jump or go to a specific location, I have to use that number, 258, to reference the player. But folks, this number isn't fixed. It can change during the game or every time you log in, okay? So, how do I find out what number my player is? We do that with a function. A function is something we use to perform actions in the game. In this case, let's say our action is to find the player's number. To do this, folks, I call a built-in function in the game, all right? A function that the Rockstar team created. In this case, we'll be calling the function PlayerPadID. Now, to call a function, folks, just knowing its name isn't enough, okay? To make it run, to make it do something, you gotta open and close parentheses. After the name, got it? And once you execute it, it'll give us the number that represents that player. Enough chit-chat, let's get to coding. To give the weapon to our player, we'll use a native called Give Weapon to Pad. This native here, folks. We also need to execute it. To do that, we always use parentheses, okay? But for some functions, folks, some actions we execute, they need some data. Like with Give Weapon to Pad. In this case, one of the data it needs is which player we want to give the weapon to, right? Here's Pad. It shows Pad here and a number that represents the player. Got it? So let's say our player's number was 258. We'd have to pass that to this function, right? But it asks for some other data, okay? Not just the player who's gonna get the weapon. For instance, the second data it asks for here, separated by a comma, okay? So it asks for the weapon hash. That's the code for the weapon, the number that represents the weapon in the game, okay? And how do you find this number? Put a comma here, okay? To pass the second argument, You'll see when you put the comma. It shows here, see? Now you gotta pass the weapon's hash, the number that represents the weapon. How do you find this number? You search it on Google, okay? Search for GTA hash codes. Go to the first site that comes up. Here you go to weapons. And now you can see all the weapons in the game, right? Different from the number that represents our player, right? The number here that represents the weapon's hash, it never changes. Unlike our player, which could be player 1, player 2, 3, depending on the number of people on your server. Alright, let's go. 
I'll choose a weapon here. I'm gonna choose the pistol, okay? So, here it is. The name of my pistol, right? And the number that represents it, I'll copy this number, got it? Now I'll go back to my FXDK. Now I'll pass this number here to my function. Put a comma, and let's see what else it needs. Look, in this case, it also needs the ammo count, which is the number of bullets we're gonna give to our player along with the weapon, got it? So, I'll put 100 bullets here, got it? I put a comma. Now it asks me if the weapon will be visible. What's that, folks? If I'm gonna give the weapon directly to the player's hand, or if they're gonna have to scroll the mouse to choose that weapon, right? In this case, we're gonna say that we don't wanna give it directly to their hand. They'll have to choose the weapon. So you'll pass false here, which is a Boolean. A Boolean, folks, it's a true or false value, got it? So I passed false here, and lastly, it asks me for one more parameter here, which is if it should force the weapon into the player's hand. Imagine the player is doing an animation or holding something, right? If you pass true here for this parameter, it would give the weapon even if the player's hand is occupied. In this case, we're gonna pass false, because that's not our intention. Here, folks, I've passed all the arguments, right? The data that this function needs, which is a number representing the player, the number here that represents the weapon, right? The amount of bullets I'm giving along with this weapon, whether it should be visible, and whether I should force it into the user's hand, okay? But folks, we've passed our player's number here fixed, right? 258. And we know that the player's number isn't fixed, right? It can change, especially when you join the server, okay? So we're gonna get the player's number. How are we gonna do that? We're gonna call the function we saw, player pad ID, okay? Open and close parentheses to execute this function. This function will be executed. And you can see here it says player pad ID, right? Here in parentheses, it's telling us we're calling the function. And the colon here says it's gonna return a number for us, got it? So when I call this function C, opening and closing the parentheses, when I call it, it'll give me a number, got it? So instead of leaving the fix 258, we're gonna always get the number that represents the player in the game. Done, folks. We just need this line to give a weapon to our player. And how are we gonna test it? You'll first save your file with Ctrl plus S. You can press Ctrl plus S to save or come here to the file and close it while saving, close and save like this, okay? I'm just gonna press Ctrl plus S, all right? Ctrl plus S saved, and now I'll give a play here to start my server. Since it's the first time we're launching our server, it might take a little bit. In fact, your screen might be a bit smaller. It should look somewhat like this. So you can click the magnifying glass here once or twice, and it'll minimize it and make the game screen larger, okay? You can also drag it here a bit to make the game screen bigger, too. By the way, folks, if you close this little window here, it doesn't mean the game has closed, okay? Just come here, the 5M icon, and click on Game View. Then you'll get back to the game screen, all right? I'm in the game now, so I can scroll the mouse to check if it granted me that weapon we created. Look, folks, it didn't give me the weapon. Why's that? This happens if you don't save the file here, all right? So, Ctrl plus S, save the file. Now I'll go back to the game. See, I'll scroll the mouse, and there you go, my weapon, all right? If you forget to save the file, you won't have the weapon in the game. So, go back to the file. See, press Ctrl plus S, save, okay? Every time you save, it gives a tick to this script. See the blinking light there, all right? You see? It blinked from red to green. You can also do a manual restart. Come here, right click on the name of our script and click on restart. I clicked on weapon, clicked on restart, and it restarted our script. So it granted me a weapon in the game, okay? See, and now I can shoot. How did I get back to the files to exit the game control? I press shift plus ES key, okay? Shift plus S key, I get my mouse back here to move around in my IDE. Switching between my file and the game, okay? Clicking inside here, I get back to the game. 
So, shift plus ESC to exit, and switch control to the IDE. Clicking the game gets me back in the game. Now I have my weapon here, right? So we created a script. The script we created, folks, was quite simple, you see? It wasn't like giving a command to create the weapon. Instead, it's a script, so that every time the player joins our server, they get that weapon, all right? To test if we can put another weapon, we'll press right here to exit the game, okay? Or you can press the Windows key, too. Let's head back to the GTA Hash Aru site for the weapons, and let's pick a different weapon. Let's choose this ray gun pistol here, okay? So, I'll copy its number. The number, folks, representing a weapon can be positive or negative, okay? So, here, see, I've got a negative number. Look at the minus sign, so I gotta copy the minus sign, too, okay? I'll copy the number here representing our ray gun weapon. Back to FXDK, I'll come here to my client file and now I'll replace the number representing the weapon with the number I copied from there. See that it's a negative number, so I have to put the minus sign here, alright? I'll save with Ktorel plus S. Saved my file. I'll go back to the game and look now, folks. I can scroll the mouse here, and you'll see that I have an extra weapon. Why doesn't the weapon appear in these slots? It doesn't show because 5M, or actually GTA itself, groups some weapons, okay? So for me to see this weapon, I'll have to hold tab, I'll go here to the pistol, and you might even notice here that there's a 2 inches bar, right? It means there are two weapons in that slot. Scroll the mouse here and go to the second weapon, and then back to the first. I'm holding the tab key to do this, okay? Hold the tab key and scroll the mouse in the weapon slot to switch. There we go. I got here. Now I'm going to test the ray gun, got it? Pointing it at him. Wow, there you go, folks. Now you can see how our weapon is working. You can also choose other weapons from the game, alright? So shift plus S to get out of the game here, okay? Or you can press the Windows key. Let's go back to the GTA hash RU site. I'll pick a different weapon here. I'll go to page 2. Here on page 2, there are more weapons, okay? I'll pick this weapon here, for example. I'll copy its number, got it? Copied the number back to FXDK. I'll go where the number of our weapon is and paste it. I'll click Ctrl plus S to save. Save the file. Go back to the game. And now I have our weapon here. 